At first, a woman said no to a man who wanted to go to the fanciest part of the plane, but she felt sorry when she heard what he said. The man, Emmett, was very excited about his upcoming trip and didn't know something bad would happen soon. Suddenly, he said some strong words because the woman was being mean to him because of how he looked. This made the woman very surprised and upset. The audacity of the woman left Emmett taken aback. He had merely verbalized what had been on many people's minds. Gradually, those waiting in line began to applaud. But, but how had things escalated so swiftly? For anyone who has ever been to an airport and taken a flight, the inevitable stress of delayed flights, lengthy queues, misplaced luggage, and the occasional security search is a familiar ordeal that can set one's nerves on edge. Nonetheless, Emmett was determined not to let anything dampen his spirits that day. He had diligently saved for this trip over several months and had even decided to indulge himself with a first-class ticket as a birthday treat. Little did he suspect that a self-entitled woman was about to cast a shadow over his day. Emmett's destination was the Dominican Republic. In the preceding weeks, he had exerted exceptional effort to ensure his workload was cleared, even planning to depart a day ahead of his birthday to allow ample time for celebration and relaxation upon arrival. Emmett had meticulously accounted for every possible scenario, but he found himself entirely unprepared for the impending unpleasant encounter. As he waited in line, Emmett couldn't help but hum and tap his feet, relishing in the fulfillment of his hard work as a music executive. Though the long hours he put in were demanding, in this moment, it all felt worthwhile. He eagerly anticipated the opportunity to unwind and enjoy some much-needed rest and relaxation. Little did he know that someone was about to disrupt his sense of contentment. As the line gradually progressed and the excitement of boarding the flight reached a fever pitch, a high-pitched voice from behind him caught his attention, accompanied by someone's attempt to push past him. The voice repeatedly whined, Excuse me, excuse me. Emmett turned to see what this woman might want, oblivious to the confrontation that was unfolding before him. The woman conducted an overt and deliberate inspection of Emmett, scrutinizing him from head to toe and seemingly concluding that he didn't belong in the same line as her. She used her chin to gesture toward the sign designating the line for first-class passengers, and her words were nearly sneered as she uttered the perplexing remark. Emmett found himself utterly perplexed by the woman's behavior. I believe you may be in the wrong place, she sneered. Before Emmett could offer a correction and explain that he was indeed a first-class passenger, she demanded he leave the line. She attempted to push past him rudely, exclaiming, let us through. Despite her aggressiveness, Emmett endeavored to maintain composure and diffuse the escalating tension. He couldn't help but wonder if there was something amiss with this woman. His puzzled gaze met hers, and in a calm and composed manner, Emmett clarified that he belonged in this line. Nevertheless, the woman persisted, insisting, I believe you may be in the wrong place. You need to let us through. This line is for priority booking. She didn't conceal the condescending tone in her voice, making it challenging for Emmett to reason with her. Emmett explained that priority meant first class, but the woman remained obstinate. It became increasingly evident to Emmett what she was truly implying. Yes, the woman's? Now, excuse me, they'll call y'all after we board, she declared. Emmett couldn't fathom why this woman was so convinced that he was in the wrong line or why she had singled him out. Growing increasingly frustrated, he reached for his ticket in his wallet and presented it to the woman, affirming that he was in the correct place. He owed nothing to this woman, yet he believed that showing her his ticket would resolve the dispute. To his surprise, the woman reacted with shock, her face contorted into an unfriendly scowl, and she loudly exchanged remarks with her friends, ensuring Emmett could hear her deliberate attempt to demean him. He must be military or something, she muttered passive-aggressively, but we pay for our seats so we should still have to wait, she added. Emmett couldn't believe his ears. Keen to avoid causing a scene at the airport, he mentally searched for explanations for her behavior. It was evident that she assumed he couldn't afford a first-class ticket. Could she truly be implying what he suspected? By this point, Emmett had a clear sense of the insinuations behind the woman's remarks, but he hesitated to accept that she was making judgments based on his skin color. In this modern era, it was shocking that someone viewed him as a second-class citizen. While he found it difficult to comprehend, he refrained from jumping to conclusions. He began to second-guess himself. Perhaps the woman hadn't intended to convey her sentiments in that manner. Nevertheless, the more he contemplated her snide comments, 
the more incredulous he became. Emmett calmly explained that he had been waiting in line first and had no intention of yielding his place. She would need to wait like everyone else. Could it be that he was underdressed for the flight? Emmett dismissed the notion. Observing the woman's attire, he couldn't help but notice that she didn't appear particularly well-dressed either. Although reluctant to arrive at a certain conclusion, he could no longer evade the issue. His retort prompted applause from those in the vicinity, and he turned back to the audacious woman and responded, Nope, too big to be in anybody's military. In reality, Emmett had chosen a first-class ticket precisely because of his large stature. It provided the space he needed to travel comfortably. While his thoughts raced a mile a minute, however, he understood, even before delivering the retort, that it wouldn't be enough to make the woman reconsider her behavior. Who was she to question his right to be there? Furthermore, it's worth noting that military servicemen and women aren't typically given free first-class tickets either. What compelled this woman to speculate on how an African-American man could afford to fly first class? It was none of her business. Anyway, at that point, a crowd had gathered around. Some were just curious about what was happening, while others wanted to be part of the unfolding drama. Emmett was determined not to disappoint them. Something inside him changed. Emmett turned to the entitled woman, and what he said next got applause from everyone. He felt it was time to show her she was wrong. Even though he usually didn't like confrontations, Emmett knew he had to stand up for himself. His comments surprised the woman and shocked her. Her eyes got wide with disbelief, and she moved back in shock. Emmett had told her that he wasn't in the military. He was just an African-American man who could afford to travel in first class. He used strong words to make his point clear. The crowd started cheering and clapping, celebrating his clever response and the woman getting what she deserved in public. But the story didn't end there. To the people who saw it happen, what Emmett did was impressive. He stood up against intolerance. The woman, who deserved the consequences for her actions, became the focus of Emmett's Facebook post. At first, Emmett thought only his friends would see it, but he had no idea that something unexpected was about to happen. He quickly realized he needed to think again about what he said. In just two days, many people shared Emmett's post, and it reached over 300,000 people. Lots of people commended and said good things about Emmett's response to the woman's bad behavior. They gave him encouraging words and support. One person even said it's important not to judge someone by how they look. Another person said, she doesn't know much. It's surprising that people like her still exist. Be happy, you handled it well. But Emmett's happiness didn't last long. When he got to where he was going, his post had become super popular all over the world. Even though many people praised him, Emmett felt sad because he thought his post became famous for the wrong reasons. He knew that racism is a big problem, but he realized that his post alone couldn't solve it. He had time to think about all this during his flight. After he got off the plane, he realized what he needed to do. On his 37th birthday, a day for celebrating, Emmett felt unhappy even though he was in a beautiful place. He understood that his actions had upset someone else a lot. Some people thought his first post was a lie, so Emmett had to say that it was a true story, just like racism is a real problem. Emmett admitted that he should have handled things better and not shared the story online. He saw that his post was making the problem of intolerance worse instead of making it better. Emmett decided to be kind and understanding in similar situations from now on. He wanted to do the right thing and imagine how others might feel. He said that if he were in the woman's place, he would be very sad. Even though the woman didn't accept his apology, Emmett wanted to be a good person, even if she didn't seem to deserve it. Thanks for watching another heartwarming video. Please check out our channel for more stories that will make your heart melt.